I have revamped the tutorial series as a remastered version of how to create a server on Eternos. After hearing your feedback about bugs and problems in the original series. So I decide to make this remastered version to provide a much clearer guide for new people who want to create their own servers. So let's get jump into the video. The first step is to create an account by sign up for an account or log in if you already have one. If you haven't signed up yet, simply click the sign up button. Once you've logged in, click on create a server. You'll have the option to customize details such as the logo, name, and description. But don't worry, you can always go back and edit these details later on. After completing the setup, click Create, and you'll be taken to the main page of your server. The next step is to download server software that enables Java Edition players to join your multiplayer server, click on the software and choose Paper Bucket. You'll also need to select the Minecraft server version for players to join. But don't worry, in the next step, we'll also add a plugins to allow players with different Minecraft versions to join. A plugin is a kind of add-on that adds specific features or changes to the game. Plugins allow server administrators to customize the gameplay, add new content, or enhance server management. They can do things like adding new items, creating mini-games, or protecting against cheating. Plugins are like apps for your server. Now, check the video description, where you can find the links of each plugins we need to install. To download the plugin, make sure to choose the version that matches your Minecraft version. You can check the plugin's version by checking the green button and version that's next to it. But if there's no green button, go ahead and download the latest version of that plugin. After you're done, return to the home page and click Start. A pop-up will appear asking you to accept the EULA, click Accept and wait for the server to start. When the server is online, open Minecraft and add the server by entering the server's IP address. To find your server's IP, click on the Connect button on the home page and copy the IP by adding a colon between the IP and port. After you've completed this step, click Done and join your server. You'll receive a welcome message, and you'll find yourself in the generated world. But, hold on, the next step is to add the lobby world. At this point, you're a default player and can't use commands, so let's make you an operator. Return to Eternos and click on the Players button. You'll find your name, click on your profile. There are many options available, but you just need to click the Operator button. Once you're done jump back into Minecraft and we will create a new lobby world. In the command prompt, it will confirm that you've been made an operator, so now you can use server commands. Now, let's proceed with creating a new world. Type the command slash mvc followed by your chosen world name, in my case, lobby. Specify the world type, e.g., normal, and the type of world generation. I've chosen Minecraft T-flat because it's quicker to generate. After the world has generated, type stop in the command prompt to shut down the server. Next, return to Eternos and upload the lobby world. Click on Worlds, where you'll find a world named Lobby. Press the Upload button for the lobby world and upload your lobby file. When you're done, start the server and log into Minecraft. Now, we'll teleport from one world to another using one of our plugins. Simply type slash mvtp world name to teleport. And it will ask you to confirm the teleportion by type slash mv confirm. After teleporting, locate your lobby map. Then, go to the spot where you'd like the lobby spawn to be when players join or teleport back to the lobby, and type slash set spawn to set the lobby spawn. Now, let's put it to the test. Type slash spawn to teleport back to your set spawn, and then I'll try leaving and rejoining. It works! 
Next, we'll create a lobby region to prevent default players from damaging the lobby and engaging in PvP. We can do this by select two points that cover the map. Think of it as placing your map inside a box, which we'll create by defining two vertices, one to the top right vertex and one to the bottom left vertex. After you've located your desired positions, you can select the block for position using the select item. To place a block in the air, use the command slash set block followed by the location and the name of the block you want to place. To access the select item, simply type forward slash forward slash wand. Left click to choose the first position and right click to select the second. After completing the selection, we will create a region for the area you've chosen. Simply type slash RG create followed by your chosen region name. Next, to prevent players from destroying builds, use slash RG flag followed by the name of the region you've created, then block break and deny. To prevent PvP, change from block break to PvP, then set it to deny. Now, let's test this by de opping myself to a default player and try to destroy blocks within the region we've created. As you can see, the command prompts say that I'm no longer an operator, and I'm unable to use commands. Let's put this to the test, I will try to break some blocks. And it works! Announcement! We're we'll giving away a fully set up server on Eternos of this part to one lucky subscriber. To enter and have a chance to win, simply subscribe, like this video, and leave a comment explaining why you'd like to receive the free server. The best comment will be selected, and will reply to your comment with instructions how to get a free fully set up server on Eternos. Now, let's run a command that prevents mobs, including animals and monsters, from spawning in the world you're in. Type slash MVM set followed by the type of mobs you want to prevent and set it to false. Now let's do game rules command. In Minecraft, game rules are commands that let you change game settings, like turning off the day-night cycle, preventing weather changes, and more. They allow you to customize how the game works in your world or server. As you can see, there's still fall damage, but don't worry let's fix it. I'll use a game rules command to turn off fall damage, set it to false, and we'll check if it works. To use slash game rule, simply specify what you want to change and setting it to true or false. Now let's test it if it's work. You also can prevent player from fire too, by using game rule command. These commands allow you to customize your server to your liking. I hope this help you. And don't forget that there will be more tutorials coming up. Sorry for the delayed upload, but I've got some great news. Part 2 of the tutorial is in the works. It's going to be packed with cool stuff, including Minecraft Survival SMP, more exciting options for the next part, and even more fun options for your server.